This one. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Thanks to you all for joining Match Day Minus One in Dublin ahead of tomorrow's game. And we will begin with Joe Curry at BBC, if that's okay. Um, Hi both. Um, Serena, maybe I'd like to get too much weight in terms of team leaders. Perhaps if you're sat next to you, you can move in that she'll be in the staff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, concise. The rest of the squad, how are we looking to you guys? Yeah, everyone's good. Uh, everyone will be on the pitch uh, this morning. Um, recovered well from, uh, from last Friday's game. So um, one more training session to go and uh, then we're ready for tomorrow. Yeah, yes, we've spoken about it. I think it was a very tough game, as I said, Friday. Uh, I think Sweden um, tactically challenged us. We were struggling a little bit in that in possession and out of possession. When we did get momentum, I think we had some good moments. Um, so the moment before we scored the 1-0, I think we already got some momentum, kept the ball better, and we came out of their first press. Um, and it's, of course, when we conceded the goal, there were some moments that we definitely could have done better. And I think at the end of the game, we, um, yeah, we got we got more pressure on them and hoped to score, of course, that goal. Um, also brought in some other players, which I think had a good impact on the game, and that shows that as a team, uh, yeah, we we are strong. Uh, taking that tomorrow, it's going to be a different game with a very different opponent. Um, so we'll do some different things. After the Letter Hooster said the team needs to demand high standards, do you think the same thing? What did you say? After the game, Letter Hooster said as a team, the players need to demand high standards of each other. Is that what you think as well? No, well, I think at moments, at some moments, we, we demand higher standards. That's basically what we want. I think it's in some moments, it, it was also caused uh, uh, by our opponents, by Sweden, who challenged us, and, and then it was more about our decision making, and then it, it becomes a little bit easier too. But being tighter on the ball at moments, giving the ball away easy, um, that's, that's what we really absolutely want to do better. Um, <laughs> I think who I am on the pitch, who you've always seen on the pitch is exactly what I was off the pitch. I don't think I was a calming presence for anyone during the World Cup especially. Um, but I've enjoyed watching the girls. I've enjoyed being a part of that journey in a, a different way. You know, obviously, I've got people that play for the team that are very important to me. Uh, but it's been it's been a difficult journey. But this is the I'd be lying if I said this wasn't the thing that I'd sort of have my focus on. This is where I wanted to get back to. I wanted to be good enough to get back into this squad. Um, to had some of the best memories of my life as part of this team. So, yeah. Will it be emotional setting up? Yeah, it will be. It was emotional on Friday for me. I'm I'm an emotional person. We've all seen me cry on many occasion. Uh, but yeah, it was emotional Friday even because, like I said, this is the. If there's a team that you want to be in in the world, I think the Lionesses would be up there. And uh, yeah, I just I love playing for England. The Republic of Ireland's a team in England that's really well through some of that. But I should probably sweep as well. But how do you see tomorrow night's game playing out? Where are those key battles? I think obviously Ireland, well, I'm expecting them to be really disciplined in the way that they defend. Saw a, a 1 0 result against France. Um, so I think it's going to be a test for us to, to move the ball and, and move them. And I think to see the battles, who knows? Obviously, they've got key players. Um, they've got key players up top, but also obviously a strong defensive line as well. That I, I, like, I know all those girls really well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good one. Uh, Katie McKay spoke to the media this morning. She said that she's no contact with Arsenal players. Has she been blanking you? <laughs> no, there's been no contact. She's right. That's a fair comment. Um, I think, yeah, she would know that there's no communication this week. That's not necessary. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Joe. We'll go to Tom first. <coughs> there's no mic. Oh, no. <laughs> 
to see you both. Um, Serena, uh, quite a few um, teams seem to have tried to, to stop Kira Walsh dominating the game uh, in kind of the last year or so. And I'm wondering, I know uh, the Serena head coach mentioned that too, so I'm wondering kind of how, going forward, how can you look to kind of tackle that? What, what might the solutions be to try and, when people do, you know, multiple players marking Kira, how can you get around that? Yeah, of course, you don't want to be dependent on one player. Uh, and that's exactly what you say. Um, uh, she's been marked um, very well in different games um, and moving forward too. So we expect that too. And we tried to find solutions against Sweden. Sometimes that worked. Sometimes we struggled a little bit with that. Um, and tomorrow, again, when that happens, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll find a way. Of course, then at the moment you can't play her, but we have <laughs> 10 other players on the pitch who can receive the ball while we don't want to play it back, so say nine players. Um, and, and to get to, what, what you want to do is play forward, get behind the defense, and uh, of course, create chance, score goals. And there are different ways to do that. And um, yes, uh, Kira is an important player to get on the ball and, and pass, but there are more players that can pass the ball. So. Um, yeah, we'll see tomorrow how we're uh, going to solve that. And can you just speak a bit about how uh, difficult you're expecting Arctic you know, to be? I know a lot's been written about the group being really tough, maybe because of England, Sweden and France, but Ireland's got the World Cup as well. I'm wondering, you know, are people underestimating how, how good they are in this group? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, uh, they're promoted to, to, uh, to th this group. And I think, um, you know, they, they yeah, don't ever underestimate anyone and especially not uh, Ireland uh, they've had a 1-0 result against uh, France um, I think uh, that was really good what we expect that they, they will be really they are a physical team they're very well organised and also they can play the counter attack and of course they're going to try to take that opportunity and moments that they probably will jump and press out so we, we have to be aware of that um, and it's, uh, we're definitely going to think that it's hard to break down their, uh, their, their defence Thank you. And Nick, who's going to ask you one question as well? Uh, in that year since you last played for the team, then what have been the biggest things you've noticed that England improved on? And also, how nice is it to see so many younger faces that have come through over the last 12 months? Yeah, I've loved um, love getting to know the girls that I obviously haven't played with before. The, the environment is still a nice one to, to be in, uh, which, which is great news coming back in. Um, but I think in the last year, I think we, were, we weren't lucky, we worked hard for it, but I think the 21, 22, things really went our way and we played some such high-level stuff and, you know, it felt like everything we always say about the Euros, everything sort of, the touch was golden. Um, I think went to the World Cup and so many different challenges, different teams. Um, the World Cup is just a bit of a crazy environment and found a way to win every time. Um, so I think... You've seen different sides of England over the last couple of years um, and a team that shows they can be competitive against anyone and when, we, when we're when we at our game, then I think we're, we're impressive to watch. So, yes, yeah, I think that's what the difference that I've seen coming back in, the com but the competitiveness and the, yeah, the, the want to be better within the squad is still the same. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. We can ask the photographers in the room to now pause on photography. That would be appreciated. Uh, we'll take a question from Emma at the BBC. Thank you. Hi, Ben. Uh, Serena, do you think this is... It must have been good. I know you said, obviously, don't underestimate the planning, but clearly, based on the world of rankings, obviously, the other top opposition in the group. Is this, is this a game that you can really can't feel not, not to win? Well, I don't want to really talk about must. Um, we really want to win this game. And if, um, if we win this game, it puts us in a better position. Um, and we know this group, I think um, it's, it's hard to predict where it goes to. So you just go out there from every next game and, and try to win it and play your best game. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, and yes, we know if, we, um, if the result is good, it puts us in a better position. If the result is not good, then it puts us in a harder position. But then still, uh, there are four opportunities uh, to change that around. Yeah, obviously you said Leo's going to play tomorrow, which is fantastic. Leo's going to get more excited about that. What extra strengths would she give you both on the ball and, and off the ball? Yeah, well, um, of course, Leah is, is an intelligent player. Well, first of all, I want to say that, that we, we have hard, hard choices to make in the team because I think the, the competitiveness, just what Leah said too, is, is really high. 
and we have many options uh, in, in different positions. I think what Leah brings is, of course, vision. Uh, in possession, uh, yeah, she's just very bright and finds the right path. And, um, yeah, the flexibility, the defense, uh, um, being able to defend the, the space behind her together with everyone else because defending doesn't just start with one player, it starts with the team. But that's what I hope um, Leah will bring the team tomorrow. We'll, we'll bring that to the team tomorrow. Yeah, just a quick one, Leah, simple question really. How do you start the case of the game? <laughs> uh, well, if she doesn't have the ball, she can't do anything. That's a good start. Yeah, right? I was uh, hoping for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Emma. We'll go to Kit. Um, hi, Leah. Um, Leah, I just wanted to pick up what you said about the fact that you wanted to come in presence as a, as a wall for the past year. You just maybe expand that out, literally kind of bouncing around the room, or what were you doing? Uh, being at the World Cup final and sitting next to Jill Scott was one of the worst decisions I've ever made in my life. <laughs> Not being at the World Cup final, just sitting next to Jill. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I just live and breathe it. I've, I love playing for England, but I also love watching England. So yeah, I was not, I was not a calming presence, as I'm probably known for on the pitch, not on, not on the sidelines. And how was, um, specifically last Friday, it was, it was in the first... Again, you missed over the last year, but was it kind of the first point you've been on the bench and almost been so close to getting on the pitch? How, how was that kind of specific experience? Um, I think being, being in a team this good, like it's, um, I don't know, I felt like it was the next stage in my, my recovery, my journey back to, to playing again. Um, and I, I don't know, I just, I, I love being around the team, I love the processes that we have and being that level of support on the day, that was my role and I just wanted to do it as best I could. Mm. I think it was almost kind of like a, a, a compliment to the, to the squad as a whole because I think kind of, a lot of us expect you to just kind of go straight back into the team and kind of just like anyone else but just your sport essentially. The level in this team is so high and um, the way that especially within my unit, I think the options and the, the versatility of the whole unit is, is a great thing to have for England, but the level of performance is so high. And um, I think, yeah, coming back in, I've known that there's pressure to reach a certain level, and I've been chasing that the whole time. I've had my head down. So, yeah, no, I was, um, like I say, it was my role on Friday, and I hope I did my role well, but I enjoyed it the same. <laughs> and um, there was one kind of about the okay tomorrow, obviously. I think whenever I've played for England and we've had so many different games against different opposition, I think being a successful team puts a target on your back regardless. So we, we offer meet teams that really, really want to beat us, but I always trust that we want to beat them more um, from a footballing perspective. And I think it's going to be a great occasion. I'm, I'm so happy that the game's at this stadium. Um, this many people coming to watch women's football, I think it's a huge respect to what Ireland have done uh, over the last couple of years as well. And we're going to enjoy that. It's just Serena, how was Leah as a watcher on Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch her all the time. I had my eyes on the pitch. I think she did okay. She, she did it. good, yeah. <laughs> but didn't get any comments on it. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. We'll go to Katie. Serena, Leah, good to see you both. Um, Serena, first of all, um, Alessia Russo scored a great goal in the third match against Sweden. She played really well for Arsenal. But what she added to her game recently? Yeah, well, well we worked a lot on uh, her positioning. Um, in the build, that's what she does at Arsenal too, so that's a little similar. But also, uh, when, when the ball comes across, where she does, does she position first and tend to come in? Uh, that's why I was so happy with this goal for her, because she positioned herself so well. And then the cross was, of course, very good too, and what happened before. Um, yeah, we talk a lot about um, overseeing the picture, scanning really well, and then making the right decision. When is she is the target? When is she running away? These things, what you do with centre forward, and specifically to her. Um, I think she's just in a good place. How much more is there to come from her? <laughs> she can answer that question. <laughs> I think, um, you know, we always want to go quick, quick, and, and young players that want to, 
yeah, that they improve uh, like right now. But players need time. We see that with several players. Uh, they need time to develop. It goes like this and then a little bit down and then upwards again. And um, some some go a little bit quicker, a little bit slow, or some go really quick and then slow, slow down a bit, little bit. We just talk about football all the time and try to help in development when they're here. But also that happens at club, of course. But I think there's a lot more to come to answer your question. And Leah, great to see you back. Um, one question. What quality do England need if they're going to try and beat the public of Ireland? I think if we play our game on the ball and we play it well enough, we move the ball well enough, we're tidy, then I think that brings out the best in us. Thanks, Katie. We'll go to Catherine. Yeah, I, um, you obviously called up to the squad in February and then had to withdraw three I'm just wondering kind of whether that extra delay is kind of all that make tomorrow night even more <coughs> special, given that you kind of were so close to playing again and then had to wait again. Yeah, I, uh, I think everything happens for a reason. I have to. So... This is obviously the path I was meant to be on, um, and February would have been lovely to return to the squad, but I'm not complaining now. Thanks, Catherine. If there are no questions, we'll call it a day there. Thanks, others. Oh, there was. Sorry, there are two there. I do oh, apologise. Yep. Oh, sorry, um, just there. Can you tell us a little bit about what Katie has done for Arsenal and, and the impact she's had? Yeah, I think Katie's. Um, She's a big personality. She's always been somebody that's very proud of where she comes from um, and has been authentic in that with the fans. So I think a lot of people connect to her in that way and I think she's been... She's, she knows her strengths and she, she has those strengths that can be um, game-changing as well, which I think has, has raised the profile of the game, her game, uh, and subsequently Arsenal. So, yeah, she's been an important player for us over the last couple of years. Yeah. Hi. What impressed you about Ireland's game against France on Friday? Yeah, well, I mentioned that already, I think. It's very um, compact, very physical, very well organised and disciplined, and, and uh, dangerous in the counter attack, too. And if they do get some space, of course, they can come out and, and keep the ball and, and try and create ch chances. So um looks like a very strong team together, too. So. Um, Yes, they've had a quite a journey, of course, making the World Cup, then doing well in the Nations League, now being here. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's it's a team, it's togetherness, and they have a strict plan and play, can play very physical too. Thank you. We'll take a final question at the back. Uh, so, yeah, have you had any further discussions with Arsenal with regards to the end season friendly in Australia? I've heard, of course, I've heard there's plans to go. But this is not the moment to talk about that. We have a game tomorrow and we just want to prepare for Ireland. OK. Thanks ever so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. What's this stuff? Huh? What's this stuff? Yeah, thanks.